let's look at coincidences, shall we? We see in science it is all consistent with what the scriptures tell us. I call it, what are the odds game? Literally, everything lines up with the empirical evidence of today. Science interpreted the data all wrong and wielded a fake story of evolution. Since that time, they have put an evolutionary spin on the data to present it as truth. So this game should help you prove the validity of scriptures to you, as supposedly sheep herders over 5,000 years ago wrote down what science only today has found to be true. That would be like you at 12 years old writing in your diary about the world 5,000 years from now and getting every single prediction correct worldwide. But let me explain to you real quick why this game matters. P-value is what's called statistical probability. And what we're going to do is you can look at all the different denominations on Earth and all the different religions on Earth, because that's what I did. I didn't start with Christianity. It was like the last one that I found. But what I did is when you're taking and you look at the validity of scripture, you can read them and you go, okay, well, if sheep herders wrote this down 5,000 years ago, then what are the odds that they lined up scientifically what we've just recently found in the world of science today? For example, the Bible describes that the universe had a beginning. It says God created everything in the beginning. Well, this is at a time when everyone back then believed that the universe was eternal and that the stars were stationary in the sky and they didn't move and everything existed the way that it had been forever. But the Bible said, no, there was a beginning. And today, guess what? Because of the logical reason of going back, it's called infinite regress. There has to be a beginning. So just logic dictates that there was a beginning, just like the Bible said. What are the odds that the Bible describes God as stretching out the heavens 17 times? Today, we now know that the shape of the universe described is exactly that. What are the odds that the Bible says that God moved over the surface of the waters and spoke and created light? Sonoiluminescence proves the very first sentence of scripture of the Bible to be accurate and true. There is no way in which man could have known this thousands of years ago. What are the odds that science proved early earth was highly oxygenated and saturated? Totally the opposite of what evolutionists tell us and totally opposite of what is required for abiogenesis to work. What are the odds that the Bible mentions Pangaea when there was a single supercontinent? What are the odds in a time when people believed that the world was flat or that a giant named Atlas held the world on his shoulders? The Bible describes the earth being held up by nothing. What are the odds out of all of the bones for man to be made out of the Bible states which God chose the rib, the only one that is discovered almost recently that is the only bone in the human body to regrow after it is removed? And what are the odds that when we read the Bible, it states that God took Adam's rib to make Eve and from them spread all humanity? Normal humans have 46 chromosomes in each cell, divided into 23 pairs, with two copies of chromosome 2. Since Adam's DNA was created with these two original chromosomes 2 in the Y chromosome, for which every normal man has, and that Y chromosome gets passed on to all future males, then it becomes easy to trace the Y chromosome back in history. The sons of these sons have the same Y chromosome as their paternal grandfather, and so on. For this reason, all male offspring from one man have the same Y chromosome. We follow that all the way back to a single point of origin, and we find our answer if creation is true or if evolution is true. The evidence tells us that a single male ancestor, Adam, was the father of all men because there was only one man alive to pass on his Y chromosome to the world population of males. If evolution were true, and there were many male ancestors to all of humanity, then there would be a huge genetic diversity and far more than a single Y chromosomal parent of mankind. What does the evidence show? We do only see one Y chromosome with two chromosome tubes from Adam and no other. Therefore, genetics proves creation as well as it places a tremendous limit on the amount of genetic diversity we see in the world today. Since that is what we see, not only does it verify creation from a single male ancestor, but it validates biblical account and there being only one paternal line going all the way back to Adam with no other males alive, contrary to the evolutionary theory.
what are the odds that Hebrews 11 describes what only recently has been found to be true? By faith we understand that the universe was formed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made by the things that are visible. Now it is known that all visible matter exists of invisible elements like atoms, yet the Bible knew this thousands of years ago. What are the odds that Job 38 describes the oceans as having springs? Only today with technology has man gotten down to investigate the dark high pressure conditions of the oceans to find that the Bible was right. And it was impossible for Job to know this or have ever explored to find these underground ocean springs. What are the odds that the Bible describes the earth as round? In Isaiah 40:22, which mentions the circle of the earth, this description is certainly fitting, particularly when the view of the earth is seen from space. The earth always appears as a circle since it is round. Job 26.10 suggests a God's eye view of the earth. This verse teaches that God has inscribed a circle on the surface of the waters and a boundary of light and darkness. This boundary between light and darkness, or day and night, is called the terminator, since the light stops or terminates there. Someone standing on the terminator would be experiencing either a sunrise or a sunset. They are going from day to night, or from night to day. The terminator is always a circle, because the earth is round. This biblical passage would be nonsense if the earth was flat, since there would be no true terminator. There is no line to step over that separates day from night on a flat earth. What are the odds that the Bible teaches that the universe obeys physical laws? Jeremiah 33 mentions the ordinances of heaven and earth. What are the odds that Psalms mention the paths of the sea and the ocean currents, which only recently, in the 19th century, Matthew Murray, the father of oceanography, discovered and validated that the ocean follows the paths according to the seas? What are the odds that all humans are 99.9% .9 all related, just like the Bible says, and that all early man was from the Fertile Crescent, exactly where the Bible says? We have been genetically deteriorating since the fall of Adam, because sin brought death into the world, and rapid disease increase is evident, just like the Bible describes. Genomic decay is evident. We can see it not only in man, but even of the beast of the world. We can show with the empirical evidence that there is a fast ticking mitochondrial clock in not just man, but all life on earth, as where evolution only uses bias assumption based on their own molecular clock invention which has been calibrated by only using their fossil record inference, not observable, testable, falsifiable predictions. As you can see, when someone says creationism isn't real science, they have no idea what they're talking about. It's far superior science than the biased, assumption-based, filled evolutionary science taught today. Take for example, the best way of measuring mutations is using observable, testable, repeatable evidence to calculate, wouldn't you agree? Well, we creationists take a family tree and say, it's been this many generations since the Y chromosome has been separated from its parent common ancestor. We then count up the mutations between them and divide them by the number of generations. Easy. When you do this, you get a very high mutation rate, just like the empirical evidence shows. Most mutations rate calculate anywhere between 64 and 200 new mutations every generation. So you have more mutations than your parents, and they have more mutations than their parents, and so on. This is where the difference comes from. You see, as creationists, we use the observable rates used in the genealogical method, as where evolutionists use their phylogenetic method based off nothing but pure assumption. First, they assume common ancestry to be true, so they immediately add on an imagined, unknown, unfound chimp ancestor. Then, they will take these two genes that are shared between the human and chimps, and they'll count out the number of differences and divide them by 6.5 million years another assumption, the number of years that they assume the human split between the missing chimp ancestor, and that number gives you a very small mutation rate number. 
so they assume long-scale evolution already to be true, then they assume a missing link common ancestor, then they assume a split occurred between us and them. All storytelling bias assumptions involved. The observable evidence lines up with creation, not evolution, and not even close. And this is what you will see down the line. They do the same thing to mitochondrial clocks, which I showed you before this. Tossing out the actual observable rates tested and seen in the lab. Totally biased and unscientific. What are the odds that only three haplogroups, L, M, and N, exist in all humans today on Earth? Exactly from Noah's three surviving families, just like the Bible says. We find this throughout the world today. The Bible got it right. And when evolutionary scientists discovered that there were only three LM&M haplogroups, they invented an entire fable to go around this evidence to make it fit their made-up narrative, pretending it was theirs. What are the odds that we're all frugivores, just like Genesis 1 says that God placed man into a garden and gave him every fruit-bearing tree to eat from? What are the odds that all obligate carnivores can love off of plants, just like the Bible says? That's right, animals in the Bible all started out as plant eaters, it tells us. So what happens when you put a shark or a bear or a lion on a plant diet? They can thrive. That's right, all obligate carnivores can live off of plants, even to this day. Sharks and spiders and snakes and buzzards and piranhas and dolphins and wolves, lions, panthers, house cats, alligators, crocodiles, Komodo dragons have all been witnessed and documented doing just that. During World War II, when meat was rare in Europe, they were feeding the zoo animals in London vegetables because that's all that they had. They all lived on cabbage. My crew throws in the bait to begin the test. First tuna squid, and kelp. Okay, the three baits are in. And if scent is a factor at all, the tuna or squid should go first. Seals in this water moving that fast means just one thing. Something very big and very dangerous is not too far behind. Okay, our dinner guest has arrived. A 14-foot female. Let's see if she's hungry. It's so easy to lose sight of her in this visibility. Whoa! She came out of nowhere. She is one big fish. Whoa! She just took a small bite out of the kelp. Incredible. She's coming back around for a second pass. Wow, it went for the kelp again. The shark ignored the tuna and the squid and took the kelp. What are the odds that the Bible predicted that mankind arose in the Middle East and not in Africa? We were created with what is known as created heterozygosity. And this is easily explained with genetics, which I will prove. Evolution tells us that we evolved from primates in Africa, specifically it's what's called the L1 node. It's a haplogroup, and that all humans descended from them and spread around the world. Well, the Bible is very different. It says that man was created specifically in the Middle East and in the Fertile Crescent. Well, what do people look like who live there? Well, they have brown skin. Evolution says that man arose in deep Africa at the L1 node, which would have made them have black skin just like all Africans. What does science tell us about skin colors? Well, skin color, or melanin, is governed by multiple genes, and genes come in two pairs. Two from each parent are inherited, just like letters in the alphabet. Let's look at A and B right now. As genes code for large amounts of melanin, are capital letters A and B. As we're lowercase, A and B will represent low melanin in the skin so pale white people. Therefore, black skin races can only carry capital letter genes. Capital A, capital B, capital A, capital B. They can only ever produce more black skin people. Just like white people, which carry all recessive lowercase gene letters, 
and can only ever produce low amounts of melanin children. So Adam and Eve had to have, have been brown-skinned people, therefore to be able to code all the different skin colors for the people that we see on the earth today. So even simple genetics proves the out of Africa theory is wrong and proves that the biblical created heterozygosity model is true. What are the odds that all civilizations arose around the same time, just like the Bible says? How about when the scientists found which came first, the chicken or the egg? Today, we know it's the chicken, just like the Bible says. Again, what are the odds that most religious texts worldwide tell us that man has lived to extreme ages during what is known as the Golden Age? And now we know that language cannot arise on its own, because just like the Bible tells us, God taught Adam. But you know what's interesting? When the Human Genome Project mapped the human genome, they said there's only one race of people. You know what that confirms? The Bible. Because we all go back to Adam and we're all one race. Uh, it just makes the Bible consistent with nature on this one point. Oh, that's good. I'm glad they agree on that. Yeah. Notice at the end how he just said, with this one point. Obviously he doesn't know, or care to know, about the other points. I have listed at least about 10 that directly correlate. And if you want more, check out our book. There's tons in there. Probably 50. And this is undeniable evidence with vast correlations that all line up directly with what the Bible is saying, proving that God exists and the validity of the scriptures with undeniable evidence. Yet, people think these are perhaps just a coincidence, made up by sheep herders 5,000, 6,000 years ago, yet they all line up perfectly with science today? I think not. You see, they know deep down that this statistical probability game destroys them. And not only that, but it proves biblical creation. This is why they ignore it and just come up with rescuing devices and excuses to refute it so that they can continue rationalizing the lie that was sold to them because it is what they want to believe and need to believe. These anti-theists are not open-minded. They are biased critics who hate God and anything related. This is why when I tried to play the game with Arn, he quickly saw where I was going and stopped it immediately before the audience could hear it and that he would not have to answer the facts contained in the game. I was going to let him off easy and just give him a few, but imagine him reading the huge list of undeniable evidence that actually exists in our work. There would be nothing he could say. Look at what happened when I tried to play this game with Arn. What I usually tell people is rather than just constantly going against evolution, I would like to say that we have a way to determine whether or not our model or whatever you like it to be we can look at with statistical odds we can take the bible and we can line it up and we can say well what are the odds we can do this we can go what are the odds that all human beings are related by 99.9 percent .9%? what are the odds, are the that, odds? All, uh, that human okay, beings have to know, we're not going to do this these people hate creation they hate it so much the reason why is because if evolution is false there's only one other option and that is creation. 